Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy CV with another reaction video. And this one is going to be called Geography Now Australia. Done some reaction on artists in Australia, uh, John Farnham. I watch AFL. I uh, started watching rugby, a little bit of cricket. And I actually want to learn a little bit more about Australia and also some comedy. So I figured why not just actually learn about the country. Um, I do know this six states i think you guys say states just like we do here in, in usa i do know that because uh i did a reaction video to an afl game somebody told me about states and all that stuff so i think it's called states not province state what else i know some some lingo i've learned things such as the one thing that really confuses me still is the flag between Australia, New Zealand, and even sometimes the UK. But I, the UK, I know, but I think New Zealand and Australia, I get lost when I see the two flags. So hopefully that, hopefully that gets explained in this video. But anyways, let's get, uh, let's get this to 100 likes. If we can't appreciate you guys, man, let's do it. All right, everybody, let's just all get it off of our chests. Koalas Oops. and kangaroos, boomerangs, didgeridoos, Sydney, Melbourne, Uluru, crocodiles, cockadoos, everything that will kill you, shrimp on Barbies, that's not true, that Vegemite stuff that tastes like poo, coral reefs and platypuses, plat platypus platypi, what's the plural of platypus? All right, now let's actually- <laughs> Hey, I did try Vegemite, um, I didn't like it at first, but after like two months, I kind of got used to the taste and I finished the jar. It was a small jar, but I finished it and I actually ordered another jar of Vegemite. So, hey. Learn about the freaking country. Okay. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. <laughs> Today's going to be Australia. You know the drill. Let's dissect the flag. Thank you. Thank you. Right the off the Australian bat. flag has a blue field with a Union Jack on the upper hoist corner to represent that it was a former colony and a current Commonwealth of the United Kingdom, with a large star under it representing the Commonwealth, and the five stars on the right, the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Crucis, to the right representing the Southern Cross constellation. All right, that was fun. Oh. Now let's discuss about the borders. Really? I thought it was now, going to be more obviously, confusing. as an island nation, or rather large one, but still an island, Australia doesn't have any borders with any other nations, but that doesn't mean that Australia doesn't have some rather intriguing parameters. The country divides itself up in a rather intriguing way. Like the US, Australia has states, not provinces. There is a difference. Six of them, and each one kind of has their own little flair and quirks, like Tasmania, known for being crazy. Where things get a little interesting, though, are the territories. Australia has three domestic internal territories and six overseas territories. Technically, seven huh one two three four five six seven which has made that's so that's the island itself and if you include the australian antarctic territory even though the antarctic treaty kind of bans anybody from claiming antarctic soil as their own wait what that's a thing i thought i thought everybody's banned from that look we don't agree on anything on this planet i'm talking about from gun control to nuclear weapons to food medicine we don't agree to anything on this earth but one thing all nations do agree is stay away from there that's a red flag for me man i don't know what's going on over there but i think something is there that i don't know i think there's some magical powers over there man i don't know which we will find out in future episodes that a lot of countries do a wonderful job at ignoring. The three internal territories are Northern Territory, Capital okay. Territory, which is basically just the capital city of Canberra and some extra space around it, and the confusing little tyke Jervis Bay Territory. Jervis Bay was bought and developed to give the inland capital Canberra access to the sea, and eventually Jervis Bay split from the capital. However, it's still counted as part of the capital in elections. It's a little confusing, even though it really doesn't have much going for it, except for a small Navy base and beaches that it kind of took from other neighboring towns. The most dramatic border area, though, would have to be the middle of Australia. For years, this slab of land didn't exactly quite know how to distinguish itself and has gone through four transitions in the past century. First, it was all South Australia, which didn't quite make sense because parts of it touched the northern parts of Australia, so it split into two, one state and one territory. Then okay. for four years, it became South Australia and two territories, the new one being called Central Australian Territory, then finally it changed its mind and went back to being Northern Territory. Central Australia is kind of like your girlfriend at a restaurant. What do you want? 
What do you want? It's not that simple. Finally, we've reached the overseas territory. Okay, so the south and then there's north territory. Quick question. Is there any conflict between south and north? Like, is there like, like real fight? I'm talking about like, not nah, like people walking down the street. Like, hey, 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 are you from the south? Not from the north. Hey, mate, you got to get out of here. I'm talking about military fight. Like, has that ever happened between the two? Just asking. Territories. Although Australia has over 8,000 islands under its sovereignty, six of these islands operate as distinct territories, what? some of which sustain themselves with permanent populations. They are Ashmore and Cartier, the Cocos or Keelings Islands, Coral Sea Islands, the Heard and McDonald Islands, and the popular holiday spot, Norfolk Island, and the pleasant Christmas Island that gets attacked by huge coconut crabs every year. Fine. Bro, I've never heard of any of these islands. Okay. I'm learning. Okay. Finally, Australia is home to arguably the most micronations in the world. Places like the Principality of Y, Rainbow Creek, the Empire of Atlantium, and more. These nations were developed by either small groups of people or a single person because they were doing things like protesting taxes and wanted to claim autonomy, or they were just kind of bored and decided to amuse themselves. But still, hey, they tried. What? All right, now let's talk about the landscape, shall we? Okay, not all of Australia is a desert, okay? Only about 35%. Okay, so besides Antarctica, Australia is the driest continent on the planet, which explains why, yes, 85% of the population lives along the edges of the country within 50 kilometers of the coast. Yeah. Nonetheless, okay. a lot of places, specifically around the coasts, actually have very temperate and even tropical landscapes. By the the north, you find tropical zones and wetlands and rainforests. By the far edges on the east and west, you can find subtropical zones with lighter forests oh, and plains. Okay. A little bit inland, close to the interior, you find grasslands and flat stretches of semi-arid terrain. In the southeast by Sydney, you find temperate, cooler, arid land with semi-tropical yet slightly dry areas with an abundance of trees and plants. Then, of course, you have Tasmania, which is on a completely different level of green. Then we reach the deep <laughs> interior where we hit the great deserts like the Great Victoria and the Great Sandy Deserts. Oh. This area is famous known as the outback the outback is essentially the area of australia with long open stretches of red and orange desert that lays out beyond the horizon with few sparse populations of people that can be found anywhere it has a dry rocky rugged terrain that everybody assumes is teeming with a variety of poisonous insects and reptiles and well i mean it kind of is but still there's more to it than just that oh and don't forget lake hillier that strange lake that is mysteriously naturally pink for some strange reason that i remember this uh, like earlier, I did a video on that, man. That, that was fascinating. Um, I, I don't know, man. I like the outback, man. I'm an outback kind of guy, man. I want to be just, you know, put me all the way in the country. Let me grow my crops. Let me have my drink. And um, let me just fish, you know, whether it's, you know, ocean or some lake. Just let me fish and listen to some good music and call it a day. Maybe I'm just getting old, but yeah, that's what I need. That's what I want. Baffle scientists. Now, if there's one thing that really epitomizes Australia, it would have to be its world-renowned beaches and coasts. People flock from all over the world just to enjoy the beautiful, pristine atmosphere of a real, authentic Australian beach. Just remember to put on your sunscreen, though. Australians actually kind of have a joke where they can tell who the ignorant tourists are. It's usually the ones who <laughs> think they'll be totally fine sitting out in the... Wait a second. Did you guys just see that, or was it just me? Tourist star. It's usually the... What did this person do? That is, that's for house arrest. I don't know if that's the same thing in Australia, but in America, if you got that, you, you basically, it's called house arrest and you're being monitored everywhere you go. Maybe in Australia, it's something different, but yeah. What did you do? Out of all the pictures you could have used, this is the one that, that got selected. That's funny ones who think they'll be totally fine sitting out in the sun for more than 20 minutes. Skin cancer rates are actually exceptionally high in Australia and the population has acknowledged the precautions that they need to take. Now we all know that Australia is home to some of the most unique and curiously distinct animal species in the world not found anywhere else. However, Australia is also known as the home of many feral species. Australia has over 50 invasive species that were brought over to the land from areas mostly in Europe and over the course of nearly one and a half centuries have bred and spread like wildfire wow. all over the country. Animals like like the European rabbit, red fox, water buffaloes, goats, pigs, even camels, and worst of all, the famous cane toad. They've all gone wild and have cost the Australian government billions of dollars in environmental damages and maintenance. Yeah, I don't really know how to transition into the demographics from this part, so here's <laughs> demographics. 
Today, Australia has a population of about 23 million people. Now, to many outsiders, Australia is kind of known as the place where the British sent their prisoners. First of all, that's rude. Second of all, that's only like kind of half true. Yes, during the early years of Australia's colonization from the UK, droves of convicts were sent to penal colonies in Botany Bay, which is now in present day Sydney. Over 165,000 convicts, about 25,000 of which were women, wow. were sent over the course of 80 years. Although the British Damn. weren't the first ones to discover Australia, it was actually the Dutch. As they came, they named the land New Holland and the adjacent island next door New Zealand after the province of Zeeland in the Netherlands. However, as we'll soon discover, the Dutch were really good at discovering places, but kind of not so good at colonizing. Wait, does New Zealand means New Island? Oh, am I just reaching? New Zealand, New Island? I don't know, maybe not. Organizing and maintaining those places for themselves. However, most of Australia's population came from natural colonization from British non-convict nationals. Some would argue that Australia was kind of like the UK's version of Operation Backup Plan in case of America goes crazy. After the American Revolution, the UK tried to compensate for lost colonies by re-establishing new ones, and Australia was hot on the list. About 85% of the population is European. Asians make up the next largest minority of about 12%, mostly coming from China and India and other Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam and the Philippines. And by the way, yes, Australia does have black people, not many, but before the Federation began, Africans, mostly from sub-Saharan countries like South Africa, Mauritius, Zimbabwe, and Sudan, have historically resided in Australia. It wasn't until the 60s when African assistance programs allowed many Africans to study and eventually move to Australia. And today, they make up about 1% of the population. One demo Just one? Just one. I'm bringing my family over there soon. We're going to be 1.1. <laughs> the graphic of people that commonly gets overlooked, though, would have to be the native Australians, commonly known as the Aborigines, which make up about 3% of the population. Abor That's it? I thought, I thought there would be more. Wow, just three. So there's more Asians there than... Wow. I thought it would be a bit more, more which than... make up about 3% of the population. Aborigines yeah. are a very unique and distinct people group that come from hundreds of different tribes, oh. each with their own language and dialect, spread throughout the North, South, and Central regions. Today, Aboriginal rights are a huge hot-button topic in Australian legislation, and about 22% of the land of Northern Australia is Aboriginal-owned. In 2013, Aboriginal groups actually banded together and decided to kind of make their own little state called the Murawari Republic, independent from Australia. The Australian government, though, doesn't really recognize this claim and just kind of brushes it off with a meh as long as you don't cause a civil war attitude well as you can that's the same thing that america does to native americans so like america has done the same thing where yeah they don't have to pay taxes and they got their little they got their own little place in california you know they got their own uh system i guess they got their own uh economy like i said no tax they got their own police, they got their own ambulance, hospitals, all that stuff. So we did the same thing to the Indians here in America. You can see a lot of people have come to live in Australia, but now let's see how Australia interacts with the rest of the world. Australia is, let's just put it very simply, a very popular country. If this was high school, Australia would be on the top of the social ladder. Down. <laughs> Everybody knows something funny. about Australia. When it comes to friends though, Australia not only goes for the cool kids, but also the strategic ones. Of course, Australia gets along with many of its Asian neighbor nations, specifically China and India, as large numbers of people from those nations live in Australia, and they do great business with them as Makes well. Sense. Australia gets along pretty well with the islands of Oceania, except Fiji. In 2006, Australia refused to back up a military coup that overthrew the government in Fiji, and since then, things have been a little weird between the two countries. In terms of their best friends though, of course, New Zealand would have to rank in the top level, and they are basically like siblings that share a very similar culture, language, and histories as former colonies. Where yeah, Australia and, and New Zealand, I feel like they're like brothers and sisters. It's like, yo, you can come over for dinner, or you can come over when it's my birthday, you're invited to the parties, you're invited to the barbecue. It's like they, they really, you know, I don't know the difference uh, between the two places. And that's why I'm doing this because I am going to do New Zealand as well. Because I, I want to learn a little bit more about New Zealand since I'm listening to the artists. I'm watching uh, their rugby teams. So why not? Yeah. But I do feel like they're like brothers and sisters. It's like USA in Canada. It's like, hey, big bro. You know what I mean? 
Whereas the UK also has a high priority on Australia's entourage as they make up the largest demographic of people ethnically and as migrants in the country. Mm. But finally, we reach the USA. The USA and Australia kind of have a little crush on each other. Australia is always there to back up the US in times when allies are necessary. And the US, well, I mean, we Americans, we just love Australians. We love their accents. We love their culture. True. We True. love their accents. We love their spunky Australian attitude. And we love their sexy, sexy accents. Almost any Australian that comes to the US is yeah. immediately loved and welcome. Even if they are slightly sociopathic, one sentence with that accent and we are smitten. We love you, Australia. In conclusion, Australia is just, everybody loves Australia. Stay tuned, Austria is coming up next. I mean, that's true, man. I don't like uh, just the accent alone. Just I just love it, man, because um, I don't know if it's, you know, now I'm, I'm used to it now. But like in the beginning, uh, when I was doing John Farnham reaction videos and people would type in calling me a big bloke and I'm like, I, I got to work on myself, man. I need to lose weight. I'm thinking they're calling me fat. But, you know, until I did a video or another reaction video talking about, you know, how australians are with their attitude and um certain words like bloke doesn't really mean that you're a fat bastard in my head i thought i was being called fat and that hurt my feelings and then i found out what it was and then i love australia again no but seriously though australia is beautiful i'm gonna do more videos on australia because like i said i watch the sports i listen to a lot of music from australia's on the australia on this channel so why not get to know a little bit more about australia i'm talking about comedy tv food especially food i'm highly interested in food the military and also the animals so yeah put in the comment section below me if there's more videos on australia because like i said i do want to learn more uh I, I had a talk with the missus and also my son and we're like hey let's take a vacation either uk or australia so the the research begins australia or uk i'm gonna probably end up doing both because i want to go to uk to an arsenal game i'm an arsenal fan and i need to watch it live so we'll see we'll see i, I will probably do both but right now we're like let's plan it australia uk where are we going you decide where should we go i know you're gonna say australia but you know anyways if there's any other videos put in the comment section below. Till next time, peace.